Let's take another look at creating a closure that's a little more along the lines of the patterns that we'll be talking about throughout this course. So I'm going to come right below this one and I'm going to create a variable now. I'm going to call this my closure2. And I'm actually going to assign this to an anonymous function. Now this will be very similar to a class definition here, if you work with classes at all. And inside of it, it's going to be very similar, but I'm going to change things up just a little bit. So I'm going to come in and we're going to say that we also want to have an actual function in here. And I'm going to call it, I'm going to give it a variable name of my nested function. And we'll do something like this. And then we're going to return the uh, same thing. We'll return the milliseconds. Okay, so now you can see I actually have a variable defined and I have a function defined in my code. And if you think of this as kind of the container, we're now encapsulating both of those guys within one container called MyClosure2. So now what we can do is come on up. And if I come in and we'll, instead of calling MyClosure, let's call MyClosure2, but I'm going to actually new it. So I'm going to say new my closure two, and now we can call closure dot, and let's see what happens when we call my nested func. So we'll put that in right there, and then I'll just copy that down below as well. Okay, so we're now creating a new instance of my closure two, assigning it to closure. We then try to call closure dot my nested func. And that, of course, should return the milliseconds. And because we created a closure, and we know we did because we have a nested function, references the date object, which is defined in the outer function. And that'll create a closure. Let's go ahead and save and run this. Okay, you notice we don't get anything, and that's actually expected. So I'm going to go uh, Control-Shift-I. Allows me to get to the Chrome Developer Tools. And you'll notice I have two JavaScript errors here. And it says that uh, no method my nested func. And what we've done here is because we've encapsulated this function inside of here, it's kind of a private type of function at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to return and add a return keyword right here. And I'm going to return something called an object literal. Now it's going to look like a JSON object. If you've ever worked with JSON, you have name value pairs. But officially, this is called an object literal. And that's because we're going to have a, an object we're going to add in here. I'm just going to call it foo to keep it simple. We'll separate it with a colon. And then we'll put that we would like it to call this function. Now, what I've just done there with this object literal, which goes right there, is this is what the external caller will call. They'll call my closure to whatever the object is dot foo. And it will basically forward the call up to here. Now you're going to see a little later in the course, this is going to be very, very similar to what we call the revealing module pattern. So we'll come back to that a little bit later. So now let's come up to here. Instead of my nested func, let's call it foo. And now that we have that return, what will happen is this will return a reference to my inner function. And so now we have a closure created because of this, and we have a way to get to this function. So let's go ahead and run it. And we should see the two values, and they should always be the same because this object, when it calls the function, we're creating that closure, and the date object is being preserved in memory. So again, this is just like a class, which is encapsulating my variable and my function. A little bit different, of course, but this is how we can simulate it with JavaScript. So that's an example of another type of way we can work with, work with closures. And this is going to be very much along the lines of what you're going to see in the remaining modules of this course as I show some of the different patterns.